So your resolutions are kind of like the, the resources you need to be able to achieve goals, but they're not the goals themselves. Hey guys, my name is Tom Froze. I'm an illustrator and designer in Vancouver, British Columbia, and this is the Making Friends vidcast where I answer your questions about illustration. So happy 2019, happy new year guys. This is the first video of the year, episode 30, episode 30. So welcome, thanks for joining me. If you watched my last episode, you'll know that I invited you guys to tell me what your guys' creative resolutions are for the new year. And so a couple of you guys did send in your resolutions. I was hoping for like, you know, a handful, but I, I did get two and I will be reading those resolutions uh, toward the end of the video. Anyway, I wanted to start off just by reflecting on my year for you guys and talking just a little bit about my thoughts on what, what makes a good creative New Year's resolution or what makes a good New Year's resolution at all and perhaps what the difference between a goal and a resolution is and how we can set goals and resolutions that work for us and perhaps why they might fail. 2018 for me was a an overall successful year. It was, um, there was a lot of ways that I outdid my other years. But there were also ways that were more challenging and, and felt like more of a struggle for me. I write about my whole year in my 2018 annual report. So every year I create an annual report. So in January, around early January, I'll write an annual report reflecting on the past 12 months and kind of thinking about what some of my goals and hopes are for the coming year. And I would recommend this practice to anyone, anyone at all, not, not just writing resolutions saying this year I'm gonna you know, lose weight or this year I'm gonna draw 100 drawings or, or whatever it is. It's more about saying what happened this year what were things that I appreciate? What were things that I want to celebrate? What are things that were hard for me? What am I disappointed by? And really taking an honest look at, at what actually happened and then turning that around and saying, what do I want to aim for in the next year? Um, what are the things that are going to be part of my story that, that I need to work on that are going to get me to where I want to be? And by looking back and forward at the same time, it kind of places you in the center and it, it lets you know where you are and when you know where you are, you, you have a better sense of what steps you need to take to get to where you want to go. You have a better sense of where you want to go. So I do recommend writing something like an annual report every year, especially if you are uh, into interested in a creative career. Anyway, I wrote this report. It's on my blog, tomfroze.com slash blog and it'll be there toward the top. I encourage you guys to go read that if you want, and I'll leave the link here in the, con uh, in the show notes below. So I'll just kind of summarize my 2018 without giving all the details. I'm just gonna say 2017 was an amazing year. So I'm talking about two years ago. There were a lot of firsts and a lot of big wins that were very obvious to me, like I, I won a couple awards in the uh, like awards competitions and magazines and I also got my first book deal you know I took some big risks and it all felt very new and very big and interesting to me and there were things that I felt were really fun to write about and probably interesting to read about in my report and so I, I came to that report just feeling so um, charged up about it and 2018 was different. It, I, I came and I started writing my report and I felt very like, Ugh, I don't know, like this year I'm just not as excited about what happened uh, in the past year. Like there were things like I, I, did, I did earn more this year. I did work less this year, comparatively speaking, for every dollar. So there are things that, that were amazing and, and very worth celebrating. But somehow I felt less um, pride in my year, perhaps, less excitement. Uh, and, and what I realized as I was writing this report, I mean, first of all, writing the report that the exercise of writing, just like the writing the drafts and thinking about it, made me realize what I really 
what my wins and things that I should be celebrating were for 2018. So through that process, I, I, I realized I have a lot to be thankful for. But what I realized also in this process is that in previous years, 2017, 2016, 2015, all these years, every year I was, I was breaking new ground, doing new things that I hadn't done before, but it was also like pushing uphill and, 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 and putting in a lot of hard work. You know, it's, it's like if you're a cyclist and you're going up to the top of a hill, you know, you're, you're waiting for the, the, the hill to just crest and then you can coast down the hill for a while. Or if you're a farmer and you're planting seeds, you do all that labor. And then finally, uh, you know, after t the tilling the soil and planting the seeds and watering the garden, and fertilizing and all that kind of stuff, you get a harvest, you get a yield, and, and then you can enjoy that. So what I realized is 2018 was a year of harvest. It was a year of cruising downhill. And I think for me, I am addicted to that feeling of of newness of everything being new and the romance of the romance of of the struggle the romance of climbing uphill and getting new you know that that new step that you hadn't taken before and in 2018 it was a lot of things that I've, I've done before but I was getting better at them so I wasn't feeling as romantic about it and I guess that's the dark side to success the dark side to success is that the better you get at something, the less you can be, you can feel excited about it. It takes more work not to do the work, but to realize the good you have, to not take it for granted. And so 2018, of all the things I struggled with the most, it was really just saying, I have it good. I need to just stay in the game and be thankful and not, not lose sight of what I have. And, and as, as you'll have kind of picked up in previous episodes from 2018 of this, of this vidcast, you'll, you'll see that I'm, uh, and some of them I actually talk about this struggle in some ways where I've, I've really kind of lost touch with, for instance, my, my, my customers, my clients, and, and I'm taking them for granted and I'm not treating them with the level of quality of service that they deserve. And, and then I, I did some things to make that right and and kind of turned a new leaf mid midway through the year and kind of push forward but that those are the kinds of things i struggled with in 2018. so 2018 in summary was a year of cruising and possibly going downhill and not saying not downhill in the sense that like everything's going bad but just not it, it wasn't a year of getting to new heights and that's just a different feeling. It's a different feeling. It's mellower, it's milder, it's not as romantic. And it's harder to see, see um, how good things truly are. And fortunately, through the exercise of writing this report, I was able to see uh, the good and, and celebrate it. And, and so I am very thankful. And I'm um, also very excited about 2019. I feel like I, I just have a feeling that 2019 will bring new things. I know this as a fact because of some of the jobs that I've picked up later last year that I'll be working on this year that I'm really excited about. And I'm excited to share these with you guys as they kind of become more real and I'm able to share them. Right now, a lot of them are under wraps. Yeah, at the beginning of 2018, I had a premonition, just this feeling like this is gonna be a hard year. And maybe it's a self-fulfilling prophecy but uh, I really generally had a, a sense that like something's going to be harder this year and I'm going to just have to uh, work it through. And so that was 2018. So let's talk about New Year's resolutions. It's easy to do New Year's resolutions wrong. I think we tend to be very grandiose in our resolutions and we give ourselves too much. We bite off more than we can chew. We give ourselves goals that we can't possibly live up to, right? And and so for me, New Year's resolutions aren't about raising the bar so high that it's all aspirational and not very practical. For me, it's about giving myself a sense of trajectory, like where do I want to be headed? Where where should I be headed? Where do I want to be this year? What are some some things that I should grow in grow up into 
as a creative. And I also want some goals, some things that are um, specific that I can actually work toward and say, check, I did that. So I think one distinction I, 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 I make with resolutions is there's a resolution versus a goal. So a resolution is something more about trajectory. There may be more soft goals. They're about like, I want to be kinder to people this year. They're a little less specific, a little less like check it off a box. It's not like a, a, your, re, your resolutions are these one moment things. And resolutions are things you can have control over. So you can resolve to enter into more awards competitions, for instance. You can say, I, I want to get more work into competitions, submit them. But you cannot have a resolution to win more awards competitions because you're not in control of what the judges ultimately deem awardable. That would be more of a goal. A goal is something very specific. It can be um, more of a, 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 a thing, a moment in time, thing you check off on a box. Here, here's an, here's an, uh, an example, a difference between the resolution and a goal. So a resolution might be, I want to run a half marathon this year. So this is actually one of my, my um, resolutions this year is to, is to run a half marathon. I've never run a half marathon before. I've been running more. So I feel like this is a good challenge, a next level up for me. But uh, I cannot have a goal of, of a specific time right now. I've never done a half marathon. I don't know how it's gonna go. And and for me, I don't wanna like, so, like set the bar so high for myself that I get intimidated and, and then chicken out. So if I just go into a half marathon and run the whole way, if, it, if I finish last, but I ran the whole way, I will consider that a success. Maybe a goal would be to run that marathon, that half marathon in an hour and a half or whatever, whatever a feasible goal would be. And so the goal would be more about a specific time you want to run that race in. And, and so when setting up resolutions, I encourage you to set resolutions that put you on a path towards something good without it being so specific that it's black and white. Like maybe if you resolve to do um, 600 illustrations this year, right? Like if you don't do 600 illustrations, you're going to be discouraged because you didn't make that number. But if you said you want to make more illustrations than you ever have before, that could be a more realistic resolution. So your, re your resolution would be Maybe if you did 100 last year, you do 125. That's, that's, that's growth and, and something to be proud of. So, I mean, let's like, for, I just want to acknowledge that resolutions and goals can be conflated. They can be the same thing, but uh, it's just a nice tidy way of thinking about having a resolution that's more of a soft goal, uh, more about your habits and your mindset and your attitude versus a goal, which is about a specific result of that mindset or attitude or steps that you take. So a, new, a good New Year's resolution should should be uh, the following. And this is not an exhaustive list, but just these are some things that I was thinking about. I just wrote, wrote them down here in my book. Um, they should be feasible. They should be within your reach. So it's not that we want to set goals that are outside of our grasp that's not a good resolution. That's going to set you up for failure. Set yourself up to win. Give you give yourself some low-hanging fruit that you can actually do. And probably by meeting those, you'll be encouraged and you'll 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 be able to do the harder goals. And this is actually true even in the illustration process itself. Like when I start a project, I often I'm in, I'm intimidated by the complexity or the bigness of the overall goal of the project. But if I can just do a whole bunch of exploration sketches on the first day that I start working on it, that just gets me warmed up and it's, it's, it, it is an achievement. And then the next day I can go back and build on that achievement. So another thing that, that would make a good New Year's resolution would be that it's sustainable. This is something that you can uphold doing over the long term. So your resolution sh shouldn't be, I'm going to draw every single day when you actually have a lot of client work coming in and you need to focus more on that. Or for me, in, in my case, like this YouTube channel, my I, I was trying to do one every Monday. And as much as possible, I try and do that. But 
sometimes it, it, to, if I were to record one of these every single Monday, it, uh, you know, and publish it on the hour, on time and all that, it would compromise my other work, the more important work that I have to do where I'm actually getting paid for. It. So it should be sustainable. Uh, it should be within your control. And I've already talked a little bit about this. Whether you win an award or not is not in your control, but whether you submit to an awards competition is within your control. So choose resolutions that that you are in control of and and that you can actually have influence on. And, and that puts you in the driver's seat. It makes you the boss. And that's ultimately what resolutions are about. It's about personal best. And, and becoming better people. And the only way to do that is by owning our own challenges. We can't let other people fulfill our resolutions for us. That's, that's, it's up to you, it's up to me to, do, uh, to um, live up to our own resolutions. It has to be within our control. Your resolutions should be challenging. So I resolve to turn on my computer every day. That's not challenging. You do that anyway. Whatever it is, you you should set something a little more, a little better, a little higher than where you are right now. And that's how you get a feeling of achievement, of success, and that's when you start to grow. Now, I'm going to use my running metaphor again or my analogy. Uh, I've been running a lot, and if all I did was run three kilometers every day or every time I ran, I run about three times a week. So if all I did was run three kilometers, I think I'd, I'd get kind of bored of my run. I wouldn't feel that challenged because that's that's below my level right now. So earlier last year, my goal, my my level was about five kilometers a run, about three times a week. And then eventually that just started feeling routine to me. So I raised it to six kilometers. And then uh, these days I'm doing more in this anywhere between six and 10 kilometers per run. Last year was the first year that I, uh, since I was very young, that I ran a 10K, just a 10 kilometer run. And, and it felt like such a big uh, accomplishment for me, which it was. But I did that a few times and now I can run 10K a couple times a week, no problem. And I think that's great. I'm very grateful to be able to do that. Now, the, the, the goal for me, the, re, the reason I want to do a half marathon is to be like, well, I can run 10K. Can I run 21 kilometers? And so that's going to be my next challenge. And that's a lot bigger. I still have to actually run 15 kilometers. I still haven't run 15 kilometers. So uh, that's my goal early this year is just to get myself up to 15 kilometers. And uh, that's a challenge for me. That will be like, can I do it? Can my body handle it? I might fail. Maybe maybe I just can't run a long distance. I don't know. But I need to challenge myself and test what my limits are. And if I do it in increments, it'll be easier to, to get to those bigger goals. Goals should be aspirational or resolutions goals. I'm conflating them a little here. They should be aspirational. That means it's kind of like they should be challenging. It's the same kind of idea. Like they need to they need to be sort of a little bit more than what you are now. Okay, so a resolution should also build on past successes. So let's use the running analogy one more time. If you don't run at all, your resolution shouldn't be to run 5K. Your resolution should be to run for five minutes or for 1K. And that's gonna be a success you can build on. Once you've reached 5K, then you're going to start building up your running goals to longer distances, shorter times, whatever. Your resolution should build on past successes. You want to believe in yourself. You want to believe that you can that you can actually do what this resolution is calling you up to. And so that's just one way of setting yourself up to win. So I don't I don't want to discourage you guys from dreaming big and and really putting out into the universe these things that may seem unfeasible or out of reach, that's actually a really good practice to do, but it's just good to know that that's what that is. So when you set a goal like, I want to get into kids' book publishing, um, for a lot of people, that is a very pie-in-the-sky goal, and it's not guaranteed you'll get a book deal. But if you don't set that goal, you can never work toward it. But it's just important to know that that's an aspiration 
not necessarily a goal that you can achieve. You're not in control of whether you get picked up by Abrams Appleseed or Penguin Random House to do a book deal, but you are in control of, of making work that looks like you belong in that category as an illustrator. So you can resolve to make more illustrations that look more in, you know, kids, kids lit or young adult or whatever it is, how, whatever kind of kids illustration you want to do, you can, you can resolve to do that. Those are good resolutions to do and totally within your reach. And it's also challenging, but it may be um, an aspirational goal to actually get a book deal. But those goals are important to have. It's just important to know that that's a goal, that's an aspirational like thing that you would like, but you're not gonna kick yourself if you don't get it because you're not in control of it. Another way of looking at the difference between resolutions and goals is that resolutions are necessary, goals are aspirational. So goals, we've already talked about how goals can be aspirational, but like resolutions are absolutely necessary and goals are nice to have. They're like the, the icing on the cake. We don't need to win awards to be successful. We don't need to have award-winning work to put food on the table. But we need to make, we need to get paid to do our work to eat and to, to live comfortably. So a resolution could be something that puts you in more control to to make more money. So it could be being more productive, being less distracted, spending less time on social media, being more organized on your book in your bookkeeping side of things, getting a bookkeeper or an accountant to help you, incorporating what it, all these things can be very within reach for you to do that puts you more in control to get the the more luxurious deluxe things that aren't so necessary, those goals, those pie in the sky things like awards and recognitions or speaking engagements or whatever it is that you are aiming for. So again, resolutions are are usually based on steps or habits or things that you need to do, you should do, whereas a goal is based on something that you want to do that would be great to have. So resolutions are sort of uh, more based on cultivating a mindset, an attitude, uh, uh, some habits that kind of can help lead you toward goals, which are more about this, these things that you get in a moment in time. They're, 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 they happen once or you can check it off on a box. So your resolutions are kind of like the, the resources you need to be able to achieve goals, but they're not the goals themselves. Uh, resolutions are about you becoming a better person, uh, a more productive person, whatever it is. And goals are about achieving these very specific things in, in a more extraordinary sense. So those are my thoughts on uh, goals and, and, and resolutions and, and perhaps how you can set yourself up to win when you make these things in the new year. So I wish you all the best in setting your own creative New Year's resolutions. There's still time to do that. It's still early in the year. And if you don't, if you're not a resolutions person, maybe you're just the kind of person like, I'm just going to do the best thing that I can do every day. That's also a very healthy mindset. I think a lot of us just like that, that fresh start, new leaf, clean slate that a uh, new calendar year brings us. So I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about my own goals. And I'm not really going to distinguish between resolutions and goals here too much. But basically, uh, my goals for um, and resolutions for 2019 are to continue drawing from life and keeping a sketchbook. This is important for me because drawing helps me see better. It gives me a more reflective mindset when I'm drawing. Uh, when you're drawing, your mind changes. You see things differently. It's a very spiritual exercise, and for me, it's been very helpful in in helping me feel more centered when I'm creating. And that's something that I hope to continue to do. And of course, drawing leads to new ideas and uh, opens all kinds of creative doors. I want to grow and improve this YouTube channel. So one of my resolutions this year is to keep growing and improving this channel. So that means making good quality content, hopefully learning as I go along, getting better. I have no very specific goals this year in terms of like, um, how I want it to look, what the content should be. 
I'm, I might grow into that in future years, but this year I want to keep the bar kind of lower. My, my challenge to myself is just to keep making these things. And if I have any goal at all, it's any specific goal at all, it's to grow the audience. So my goal last year was to reach a thousand uh, subscribers, which I almost did. I was in the, I was in the 950s at the end of the year. And so my new goal which I think is feasible, it's also aspirational, is to get this channel to 3,000 subscribers by year end. And I believe just by showing up, making content that I believe other people find helpful, I'll get there. And if I don't, if I'm kind of close, that will still be good and uh, affirm me. But if I'm well under, then it means that I'm missing the mark somehow. And maybe this is something that I can I could set aside and focus on other things. And so that's that's one of my my uh, resolutions. Another resolution I have is to plan my next big family work adventure. So last year we went to Toronto for a few weeks, and that was really just to see how our family travels and lives in a new place and whether I can get work done. And it worked out. And so this year we're talking bigger, further, longer. And uh, I have not set a goal to actually go somewhere this year where we might, but I don't know if it's possible. I have a few things that I'll need to take care of uh, in terms of projects here that may keep me planted here this year, but I can resolve to actually be very intentional about, about the, um, the kind of trips and, and adventures we could have in the future. So right now this year, it's just gonna be about figuring out what 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 that looks like and, and what our best options are. Uh, another resolution goal is to continue to have uh, more fun in doing my work. So last year this was uh, this is kind of a perennial goal for me is to have uh, my work look like I'm having fun. But this year I want to actually truly have fun. I can be quite tortured when I'm making my work because I'm um, I'm focused. I'm just I'm I'm an, I'm an intense person and and um, I get really anxious about about how good it is and uh, I want to be able to have more fun when I'm working and just bring that spirit into it that some of my favorite work has been work that I truly enjoyed while I was making and that's the work I'm proud of work that I'm too tortured over even if it's good or others consider it good I look at it with disdain and I, I only see struggle and and so I want to truly have more fun in having work and this is pr maybe more of a goal because I don't know if I can have, how much control do I have over whether I have fun or not when I'm under um, pressure of, of a time a deadline or something like that I don't know but it is something I'm aiming for this year and I think I think it's it's possible and I want to I want to do it I've already mentioned this I want to enter competitions this year with um, with no fear so I did uh, enter into a few competitions last year I didn't place in any I didn't didn't get any awards I spent all that money and I didn't get anything for it so to speak that could scare me away and say I'm 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 never gonna win an award but I think I just need to look at my best work and and be honest with myself about whether I think it's going to um, it has a chance if I think it has a chance put it in you got to be in it to win it and so that's that's one of my goals is to just enter into competitions this year without fear. I have no control over whether it wins. I just don't know. You know, I, I have control over whether I research and what makes for a good awards. I've been look I've been studying awards annuals this uh this this past week and just taking a look at like what are the judges looking for within different categories. Like what makes a good advertising a good winning advertising entry. And so I'm, you know, studying the stud, studying the the annuals and, and just doing my best to set myself up for success. Who knows, but I can I can still try. Another another thing that I want to do this year, I was really encouraged last year by some of the collaborations I did. So I've, I've I collaborated a lot more both with kind of bigger companies and also with individuals, creators, creative people here in my own neighborhood. And that's a really fun way of, of getting outside myself, um, extend, ex expanding my creative community, staying in touch and having a creative, uh, thriving creative life. And 
And so I want to focus on interesting new ways of collaborating with people using my illustration superpowers and combining them with other people's superpowers. So maybe I'll, I don't know, what happens when I team up with a comedian? What happens when I team up with a, a, a web developer? I, I'm not exactly sure what will work best or what, what, the, what will be good to set my um, time and energies on. But uh, these are things I'll be thinking about this year. So those are those are my creative resolutions slash goals. There's some more goalie things in there and some more resolution-y things in there. But uh, overall, these are the challenges I've set for myself and also the trajectory that I want to set for myself this year. So now it's time to read your guys' resolutions. And uh, like I said earlier, there were only a couple. I was hoping for a handful, but... I'm very grateful that two of you did write in, and I'll just read them uh, here uh, from there in the comments of my uh, previous episode, episode 29. So the first resolution comes in from Monastic Destiny. They say, my main goal for 2019 is to do 100 paintings, but at the speed I'm going at right now, I may have to bring that goal down to 50 paintings. I also want to find my own style of drawing odd bodies. I've been seeing so many odd bodies by other artists on Instagram, but it's just inspiring me to discover my own. I want to sketch and color more, financially support myself through my art, and have a solid personal brand by the end of 2019. So a great resolution uh, there, Monastic Destiny. Thank you so much for uh, sharing that with us. The next resolution comes from Dennis Angelov, and Dennis says, First and foremost, I would just like to thank you for all the resources, information, and lessons you've been putting out there. Discovering your work and vidcast has been one of my main inspirations and motivations throughout 2018, so I am very grateful. Um, you're very welcome, Dennis, and thank you so much for, for saying so. I'm hoping that these videos are inspiring you guys. That's what I do this for. And I'm super grateful to know that, that they're having uh, that effect in your life. So thank you for letting me know. In 2019, I'd, he, Dennis continues, In 2019, I'd really like to feel more comfortable in the simplicity of my style, as I often find myself anxious that my work is not detailed enough, and I rarely go for more complex scenes and compositions. So alongside embracing simplicity of my work, I also want to find a way to incorporate it into more detailed illustrations because I need to get more flexible in terms of concepts and execution. As far as other goals go, my main one is to get into editorial illustration. Hope we all have an amazing and inspirational 2019. So thanks Dennis for your, uh, your resolutions, uh, great resolutions and, and also really great to see that you're kind of working through the that simplicity detailed thing in your work I, I i struggle with that myself and that's always something that i aim for a balance of you know embracing my own creative tendencies what i'm good at and that's usually more simplistic illustrations but also really challenging myself and pushing myself into uh, making more detailed things and, and balancing style and concept those kinds of things so both you guys monastic destiny dennis Thank you so much for your creative resolutions. I wish you all the best in reaching and meeting your goals this year. And uh, stay strong. I know you guys can do it. And thanks also for mentioning my class, my Odd Bodies class. I'm, I'm thrilled about this class. If you guys haven't heard of it, Odd Bodies uh, was, um, is my latest Skillshare class that I published late in 2018. It's actually uh, my, I think it's the, the, the single most important thing that I did last year is make that class. And it's been, it's been doing really well. It's been getting lots of great reviews. And you guys have been telling me how much it's been helping you. I really appreciate that. Uh, as always, I leave a link in the show notes that you guys can, uh, where you guys can find the class. It's called Odd Bodies. It's on Skillshare. And if you're, if you're interested in learning how to illustrate people, figures, in a more whimsical, stylistic way, and, and, and you want to have some exercises that kind of guide you through a process of discovering your style, that's what uh, this class is for. Of course, guys, I, I know that not all of you were able to write in uh, your resolutions. That certainly doesn't mean that you don't have them or or, or didn't, didn't want to share them. Uh, I understand sometimes it's just hard to 
put it in writing and, and sometimes a little bit intimidating. But anyway, whatever your resolutions, whatever your goals are, I really wish you all the best in, in reaching those this year. I just want to encourage you that um, first of all, to make goals and resolutions that are within your reach, but also challenge you and, and make them, make them set yourself up to win. You know, don't have, don't, don't try to do too much. Take it easy guys. Do have a few good challenging goals and, and then just do what you can to make them work out. The most important thing as always is that we're doing our best and that we're uh, pushing ourselves, we're not sitting back and letting life kind of just happen to us, right? Thank you so much guys as always for watching. My name is Tom Froze, you can find me at tomfroze.com, you can find me at Instagram, at Mr. Tom Froze, and of course on Skillshare, all the links are below. Guys, have a great 2019, keep making great work, and keep asking great questions. Oh, did I mention? Yeah, ask me your questions. I have, I, I need to see more questions for you guys so I can answer them and create more content. So keep making great work, keep asking great questions, and I'll see you in the next episode.